Sup, Shooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. Well, first of all, sorry the uploads have been a bit slow as of late, although I can assure you all that I've been very busy researching some preem new content to help all of you hair loss witchers be triumphant in your fight against the slaphead curse. But just about a week ago, the airwaves become suddenly absolutely saturated with this breaking hair loss news. And no, we're not talking about some stupid Reddit post about broccoli this time. On the contrary, this news even made the main mainstream media. Hell, even Fox News put it on their website with this headline right here. Quote, Cure for baldness could be on the horizon as Japanese researchers generate mature hair follicles in lab. Breakthrough for common ailment may hold promise for many. Unquote. Well, that is Fox News, also known as Faux News, which is only slightly more credible than Infowars we're talking about, but Fox News weren't the only ones hyping up this story. This Japanese study is making headlines all over the internet, and frankly, this story just became more and more unbelievable with each headline I read. For instance, here's a headline from the website Futurism.com with this very clickbaity title. Quote, Scientists grow hair follicles in laboratory for the first time. You might be able to take hair from someone whose hair is really lush and make it grow in the lab. Unquote. Well, given all this hype, it is my duty as a hair loss witcher to drop everything I'm doing and investigate this breaking hair loss news for y'all. Is this a big deal, or is this just another theory that explains everything? What did these Japanese researchers really do? It can't be that they just grew hair in a petri dish, did they? Well, as it turns out, none of this stuff is new. Researchers have been able to do this for a long time now, in fact. Here's an article from 1994 where human hair follicles were taken from the scalp and grown in a lab. And yet, despite this, this first line of the article from the Futurism website says, quote, and what could presage a groundbreaking treatment for hair loss, Japanese scientists have for the first time ever grown hair follicles in a lab, unquote. So what exactly did the Japanese science patrol do here? Well, in order to figure out what they did, I had to go to the source directly, which is this research study from Japan. The study is titled, quote, Reprogramming of Three-Dimensional Microenvironments for In Vitro Hair Follicle Induction, unquote. Well, it turns out that this is a pretty complex basic research study, but I'm here for you, to make sense of all of this, so let me go ahead and activate my Witcher senses and complete the side quest for y'all. So, what these researchers are trying to do is replicate in a test tube what happens when hair follicles develop in embryos before birth. So, as everybody already knows, embryos start out as just a single cell that divides over and over again, but during this process, the clumps of cells become specialized, otherwise we'd just be born as a blob of undifferentiated cell tissue and look like Jason Blaha. So, some of the cells during this process of specialization will become heart muscle, some becomes brain, some becomes bone or stomach, and every specific part of the body. So one of the parts of the body that develops in the embryo is the hair follicles. Some preliminary research has shown that the hair follicles form from the interaction of two types of fetal cells. The first are the epithelial cells that are basically fetal skin cells, and the second are the cells below the skin called mesenchymal cells. Interactions between these two types of cells in the developing embryo somehow cause hair follicles to form that then grow hair. In the Japanese study, the researchers were trying to create these hair follicles using fetal tissue. Well, before you get too excited, this is not a study about human hair. In case you haven't guessed it yet, yes, this is yet another goddamn mouse study. But for the sake of research, let's go ahead and give them the benefit of the doubt and see exactly what they did here with all this research. Well, what they did specifically was they took the skin from the mouse embryos and used a pair of tweezers to separate the two layers of cells we've been talking talking about, which I'll remind you are the epithelial layer and the mesenchymal layer. The researchers then dissolved the collagen holding the layers together so that the cells separated. They then mixed the cells together, and you can see all the steps in this figure right here. So. The cells tended to clump together into a dumbbell-like shape like you see in this image here. These clumps of cells that the investigators called folliculoids and something that looked like a hair shaft would grow after six days and protrude out of the folliculoid like you see in this figure here. The problem is that this microscopic hair only grew very rarely, like we're talking about less than 1% of the time here. So the investigators tried some maneuvers to see if they could increase the chance that these folliculoids could actually grow hair. They first tried adding 
a growth factor called fibroblast growth factor 2, but this only increased the frequency of hair sprouting to about 2% of the follicoids. They then started looking at the fluid the cells were floating in. Normally, skin cells are anchored to a matrix of protein containing collagen, but they had dissolved the collagen in the first step of the experiment in order to separate out the cells. So they decided to add something called matrogel, which is a protein mixture that is similar to collagen. Now, too much of this matrogel just kept the cells apart and prevented them from clumping, but if they used a 2% solution of it, the cells would clump into follicloids. This time, the follicloids were spheres like you see on the right as opposed to the dumbbell-shaped clumps like you see on the left in this figure here. In fact, with the matrogel added, the epithelial cells in the clumps were located in, in the inside of the clumps, and the mesenchymal cells were on the outside, as you can see here. But most importantly, when they hit on the right amount of matrogel, gel to add, literally 100% of these follicloid clumps sprouted hair. 100%. So that sounds pretty awesome, right? The same thing happened if they used collagen instead of the matrogel. Here you can see a time lapse of one of these clumps sprouting hair. When the researchers transplanted these clumps onto the backs of nude mice, the hair stayed put and grew, as you can see in this figure here. The researchers then looked at the genes being activated in these hair outcroppings. They found that the WNT wind pathway was activated in these follicloids, and the activation was specifically in the regions that sprouted hair, which of course is a good thing, since activation of the wind pathway promotes hair growth, and if you want to know more about the wind pathway, I'll link a video about it, which I'll link below. So, what the researchers concluded was that they were able to generate what were in fact hair follicles from embryonic mouse tissue. Their main motivation was to use these follicles as an alternative to animal testing to study the mechanisms of hair growth and how hair turns gray, and they scarcely mention any clinical utility to this process, though in this figure here, you can see that one possible application is hair regeneration. But even the investigators say that this is still a long way from being a practical treatment in human beings. You wouldn't know that, though, if you read the descriptions of the study in the popular press, which may explain the unusual level of hype the study has received thus far. So, why isn't this the ultimate hair loss cure, you may wonder? Well, first of all, we're dealing with mice and not humans. And like I've emphasized in many of my recent videos, mouse hair is a lot different from human hair since the growth cycle of mouse hair is synchronized all over the animal as opposed to humans where the growth cycle is randomized all over the scalp. Secondly, we have to consider the possibility that maybe these follicloids aren't exactly the same thing as, as real hair follicles. The evidence they are not is that they don't last as long as real hair follicles. The investigators say this specifically, quote, during long-term observation of hair follicloids with matrogel or collagen, the sprouted follicles appear to regress within one month of culture." Unquote. Now, the researchers claim in a supplement to the paper that follicloids transplanted into the backs of mice cause hair growth that cycled over at least 10 months, so it's possible that these follicles can transform into normal hair follicles in living skin, but that's not clear at this point. At least in culture, the hairs don't appear to cycle and only grow to a length of 3 millimeters. The investigators say, quote, the limitation of hair follicloids is the lack of hair cycles, unquote. Finally, the investigators point out that there could be potential ethical issues if you need to grind up human fetuses in order to create hair follicles. So the investigators are hoping they can do the same thing using stem cells from adult human skin. So there is a long way to go before this technique could ever be a therapeutic option in human beings. It does seem like a good tool for generating in vitro hair follicles for hair research, though, since they can avoid animal testing, which of course is great. But it is being hugely overhyped in the media because clearly the media doesn't know much about hair research research. Anyways, I do nevertheless appreciate how the mainstream media's coverage of this subject has gotten more people interested in hair loss science, and I don't completely dismiss any of the findings made by the Japanese Science Patrol. I just think the work is too preliminary to justify the inordinate amount of hype it has received. So until more promising data is revealed, I'll likely be more focused on other subjects that I'll be sure to cover on this channel. So until then, good luck on the path, my fellow hair loss witchers. I'll see you all next time. God bless.